bassoon. <laughs> Some people confuse them. <clears throat> Everybody. Welcome, Welcome to the First United Methodist Church in Fulton, New York. And it's good morning. The sun is out. We're here worshiping. We've been called to God's house. He has put the urge in our hearts to be here this morning. And if you're here with us in person or you're here with us online, we welcome you. And we ask that you take time to, if you're in the sanctuary, to sign a few pads so we know you are here with us. If not, and on, online you have a spot in the bottom of the screen to say for comments. Just comment that you're here and say good morning uh, to us, and we'll be glad to get that message here and recognize your presence with us. We have a, in our bulletin a mission statement which is saying this is what we're all about. Amen. So at the beginning of the bulletin there is this phrase that we'd like to share together join with me if you have your bulletin in front of you uh, it is very short but very punctual on the line to make disciples of jesus christ 
for the transformation of the world, loving God and one another, and reaching out to share Christ's love. We have time now if you, anybody has some announcements that they'd like to share about the ministry that's going on in our church, you're welcome to come and share that with us now. Good morning. Morning. Um, I'm just here to say that next Sunday, my mother-in-law, Margaret Abadi, is turning 95. Woo-hoo! And um, we're having a family party on Saturday, but she would like to celebrate with her church family. So we will have uh, cake and refreshments in the fellowship hall after service next Sunday. Well, Please join us. us. Yes, thank you. All right. We have some announcements as well. Number one, I'm sure some of you have heard, but we wanted the whole church to be aware that because of health problems, Michelle Deline is no longer going to be our custodian. So we um, would like to invite the church to do a card shower for her in the Welcome Center. There is a basket with her name on it for you to place any cards, any gift cards, any flower, whatever it is that you would like to send her off with in that basket. She will be here until the end of August. So I'd like us to collect things throughout the month of August. That way we can send her off with these gifts. Secondly, I wanted to say thank you so much for everybody that was able to donate for the um, fund of helping the people that were messed up with the storms and all that in Rome. We, we all together, we collected $150 and that, that was sent already, so thank you so much for that help. I also wanted to say thank you to those of us that um, were at the movie night. Some of us were, our family was at the movie night. We had a lovely time and we noticed that the summer is a lot happening but still we want to get these times out for us to do things in fellowship so we will continue to schedule them throughout the year and the invitation is for all of us to join in with three more announcements this coming saturday we have the opportunity to do a safe sanctuary training and it's free by zoom via zoom the safe sanctuary training is happening from 9 to 12. I am opening my home. If there's anybody that would like to do that safe sanctuary training, I would love to have you join me to do that. And this is for people that work with children and people um, that are struggling with their health for us to be covered by our church. So again, this is something that is free. We can do a snack together, we can have lunch together, but we would love as many people that are able to come and join us for this safe, safe sanctuary training. If you are available from 9 to 12.30 next, this coming Saturday or some of the time period, um, we would like to know that. Please let me know so that we can um, plan to have you having lunch with us. And the last two, on the fourth after the party for our sister Margaret, we'd like to invite everybody over to the Parsonage for an uh, informational meeting. And if you look inside your bulletins, you have a paper with these announcements in it. Informational meeting for the upcoming bazaar sale next Sunday after worship and after the celebration, okay? So we'll have a few goodies to eat. We won't be starving. But I'd like to touch bases with those of you that signed up. If there's anyone else that would like to help plan that, please um, sign up at the Welcome Center. And lastly, we have uh, an opportunity to grow. I know some of us enjoy talking. I know some of us enjoy the Word of God. And if you're good at talking and enjoying the Word of God, when you put that together, you have a lay person that can preach the Word. And I, I, I found a seven session course done by Pastor Brandon Hilgeman, and I wanted us to do a seven session training together so that we can prepare people to preach once a month and develop that character of Jesus Christ to share the word with others. 
So the, the invitation is to start the third week in September, but I need to know who is interested. So at the bottom of your paper, you can fold that over, God bless you. I am interested, put your name and information there, what times work best for you, and please put that inside the offertory plate for me, God bless you, so that we can um, have that information. Philly and Annabelle are not here, I wanted to share an announcement about them, but I'll do it when they're here. Okay, thank you so much. Other announcements and development? We're aware of it, but on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uh, Pastor has a prayer time on Zoom or on Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. You're fine, sister. Is, it, is the speaker working? Yes. 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 Okay. <laughs> At 7.30, prayer, uh, Pastor has a prayer time. Um, Zoom or on Facebook, you can catch your prayers. They're, they're very inspiring. So I, I hope you'll join us on those times. Other announcements next Sunday. Coffee hour. Woohoo! After church. Yay. For birthday celebration and coffee hour. So please join us for that time. Um, and then also on the 10th, a lot going on that day, there's a blood drive from 8 o'clock in the morning to 12.30. And we ask that you um, call the Red Cross or go online and sign up for an appointment because they'd like to know in advance how many might be coming so they can plan staff as well as uh, have enough uh, signers coming. And at 3 o'clock that same day, the 10th, is Kendra's Quinceañero. So the celebration ceremony will be happening here in the sanctuary at 3 o'clock. And then after the ceremony, we move over to the fellowship hall for the um, banquet. If you're interested in coming, we need to know because we need numbers for the meal. And if you're not able to come, we have a basket with her name in the welcome center as well for people to drop off cards. Somebody requested that, so we put that in the fellowship hall for you guys, okay? Thank you. Good morning. It was my pleasure to sponsor Mike Capoletti for A Closer Walk, and um, Mike has agreed to come up and just share a little bit about uh, what the walk meant for him. Excellent. Good morning. I'm Mike Capoletti, and I made Closer Walk 123 last weekend. And uh, it was really something that um, I wasn't expecting, which if you've taken a walk, you understand why. Um, but I had a really great time, and uh, we heard a lot of testimonies from lay people and some pastors. And uh, it's just really awesome to see a bunch of people who don't know each other just kind of come together and like receive the word, but also receive uh, other people's acknowledgments of of who God is and, and how he works in our lives and uh, I wrote some stuff down here it was just a really great time uh, I can't give really anything away but um, the testimonies were really touching from everyone that, that had one and uh, the community was great and if you have the opportunity to do it I really suggest that you do it and uh, there's tons of food, so. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. Not what I expected, but it was more than I expected in a very subtle way, and it was awesome. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. There's a women's walk coming up next this August, and I think there might still be space. I know Michelle Deline, Jordan Capiletti, and Glenda Holstead are going. So we will be praying for them and also signing some cards for them. And let me know if you're interested. The other announcements that I'd like to share is we have some people working in the sanctuary to make the service run nice and smooth today. And we have uh, our pastor, Ruth Warner, who gave us a very lovely presentation of How Great Thou Art and on her bassoon. We have our ushers, uh, Sandy Green and Ricky Chase and Dundayek. 
uh, Don Dyack, okay. and we have. I'm not at the piano today. I'm up here. I'm worship worship leader. Ooh, very nice to He's be here always. in a different category of things. Uh, but we have our choir coming and seated seated there for us during the summer to help with the singing. So Thank you, the, uh, Online people can hear what's going on with our hymns. So we thank you for your presence today and this morning. Okay. Uh, now I guess it's time for the call to worship where we can be called to God's presence. We have all our announcements. We're all set down to worship our God. Amen. Join me in the call to worship. We do not live by bread alone, but by the loving, life giving of God's love. God, give us the bread of life today and always. Too long have we lived with hunger, seeking to fill our appetites with food that leaves us wanting. Too long we have starved ourselves of spiritual food that truly satisfies. I am the bread of life, Jesus tells us. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me, Spirit, will never be thirsty. Come, on, Holy Spirit, feed us with your grace and love. May we love you, our neighbors, and ourselves, so that we may never be hungry again. In the name of Jesus, amen. If you are able, would you like to join us in singing our opening hymn, Blessed Be Your Name. This is joyful. Yes. Blessed be God's name. Let's get in. Stand up and join us in singing, please. Yeah. 
you please remain, please remain standing while we read our scripture. While I read the scripture, and you may share online, read it, um, or you can read it in your bulletin. The scripture comes from Matthew, Mark chapter 4, verses 1 through 4. It's just after Jesus has been baptized, when Jesus discovers he's got a, a life with God to share, and he wants to find more out about what's going on after his baptism, and he goes into the desert and spends 40 days in the wilderness pondering his new life. Then the Spirit led Jesus into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After spending 40 days and nights without any food, Jesus was hungry. Mm -hmm. Then the devil came to him and said, If you are God's son, order these stones to turn into bread. But Jesus answered, The scripture says, Man cannot live on bread alone, but needs every word that God speaks. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. You may be seated. Now is the time when I can spend some time with the young folk. Are there any that want to come up and join me? Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm on. Hallelujah. Okay, you got to look this way, or else I'm going to have to come down there because you got to see what's going on today. Okay? Have you ever been tempted? Hmm? <sighs> You ever had an urge to do something that might not be what you're supposed to do or might not be good for you? Have you ever had that urge, that temptation? Maybe. Oops. Hi, honey. Yeah. No, no, no. You sit down with those tails. Ever been hungry? Gone without food for a long time? And you're just starving. And everything looks so good to you. How about this? A donut. Oh, wouldn't that be? Oh, yummy, yummy in the tummy. But that's a temptation that we shouldn't be taking if it's just time now to have a good supper and not have junk food or something that's not that great for us, is it? And then what else have you been tempted by? Ever been tempted to have a candy bar? They're tempting temptations, aren't they? Oh yeah, and they're and they're not good to have just before you're having a meal or when you've been hungry for what forty days and forty nights. Oh, Jesus was tempted. And then, if you've ever been wanting a toy, a special toy that has got lots that it can do, watch this. Have you ever wanted a toy, a real special toy? It's awfully tempting to want to take and, and hug and hang on to? Oh, that, that's really tempting, isn't it? But Jesus went into the desert after he was baptized, and he spent 40 days and nights there without any food. And boy, must he have been hungry. Oh, yes. But guess what? He was starving, but he was tempted by Satan or somebody that tempted him. If he could take these rocks and turn them into bread, that's what he'd do. And Jesus was tempted. Uh, can he turn those rocks that are up on the altar? 
We We know know that God has has the power to do this. We know that Jesus has the power to do this. But what did Jesus say? What did Jesus say to the devil? No, we must live by the bread of life, not the goody things. We need the word of God to live by. So we spend time in church learning about God and learning about the the word of God so that we can go out and not be tempted by the wrong things. And we also have something for you. If you think you'd like to be tempted and you don't want want to have a memory, years ago these were very popular among kids. They were called bracelets that, and it has WWJD, what would Jesus do? And so when we're tempted, we have to think about Jesus. What would Jesus do? So we have some bracelets for each of you, and I have enough. I'll leave some at the Welcome Center if some of you adults want to wear them too, because it might help us remind not to do the wrong things. We might be tempted to go buy uh, scoops and get ice cream, but maybe that's not a good idea before we're having supper. So we need to look at our bracelet and say, what would Jesus do? Okay? I want each of you to pick one out that you would like. There's different colors. If you'd like to come up and get one. The favorite color that you would like. And we'll ask Pastor to join us for a prayer time. Okay? Okay, can we all form a circle now and have a time with Pastor? Holy God, thank you for your love, and thank you for reminding us that we can rely on Jesus whenever we are tempted. Be with us and help us to walk with you every day of our lives for the glory of your name. And to repent of our sins sins. when we fail you, Lord. Lord. This we pray pray. in Jesus' name. name. Amen. Together with her. And... I'll get it, my brother. Thank you. That's all right. Okay. Oh, we need to have the law, sister. <laughs> but while we're waiting, do we have anybody that has a God sighting that's had a special relationship with God this week or been recognizing God's power in our lives this week? Come join us and share that. I have a special God sighting. Uh, this past Sunday, we had a time of celebrating the life of Dwayne Corey, who was a member of the AA group here in our church. And um, it was a very special time, and a lot of friends from the AA group and family members were here. But I am overjoyed with the fact that two people that were in that celebration with us that day came back today to say thank you, Lord, and also because they used to worship here before, and um, they came back to this home church. So we welcome you, Kim, we welcome you. Steve, what a privilege to have you here. That is a blessing. May the Lord bless you. I think it's just been a wonderful week. Amen. Uh, The weather has been gorgeous. We've had some sunshine, we've had some nourishment of a little bit of rain, but everything is just beautiful in God's creation right now. And that's God's sight that we need to recognize every day and say thank you, God, for your beauty. Beautiful earth. 
and all you beautiful people and you created in it to her for us to enjoy and be with. Thank you, Father. At this time, I'd like to have an offertory prayer so that we can gather our funds together uh, and share with others around the world. Generous God, you have fed us well in body and spirit. Your grace never runs short, but meets us in our need. Make us one with all your children, that these gifts and our good works may bring comfort to those who grieve, friendship to those who are lonely, yes, Lord. and provision to those who are in need. This we pray in your blessed name. Amen. Amen. And we'll join in the singing of Hosanna. Please be in prayer with me. 
as we get together to listen to God's word. Spirit of God, dwell among us and revive us. You know the deep hungers that motivate us and the attempts we make to satisfy these hungers. You all don't know the grace and peace that can nourish us to full strength in body and in soul. Give enough to share with others who also hunger, even if they know not what they hunger for. We rejoice in your bread, for it truly satisfies. Give us the wisdom to receive it, that we may taste and see your goodness, O Lord. For the glory of your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Good morning, siblings in Christ, online and in person. It is a privilege to be here with you. And I pray and trust that you have all enjoyed the week, enjoyed the weekend, and that um, your bright and sunshiny faces are excited with God's blessings and God's faithfulness. I'd like to um, invite you to consider what are the goodies, like Lois had in that bag, what are the goodies that tempt you or tempt your tummy? I can totally speak for Dan and I that we are serious bread lovers. Oh, my Lord. Any kind of bread, it's like you see it, you eat it. And um, Dan and I love them. He loves rye bread, bread and sourdough bread. 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 Say that word. Sourdough bread and rye bread are not my favorite, but I eat them. But you know, we put French bread in front of me, potato, pumpernickel, banana, zucchini, raisin, cinnamon, whatever bread it is, it's going down. Talk about it, put it in front of me, and it's going down. Bread is filling and it's in enriching. And um, all kinds of breads are welcome in our household and in our tummies. I just needed to get that out there. When we reflect on the goodness of bread in the biblical sense, we are reminded that Jesus is the bread of life. Therefore, we do not live by with bread alone. As we shared in our call to worship, we do not live by bread alone, but by the life-giving nourishment of God's love. God gave us Jesus. His himself incarnated the true bread of life to sustain us today and to sustain us in our everyday life, always. For too long we have chosen to live with spiritual hunger, seeking to fill our appetites with food and distractions that leave us wanting. We have starved ourselves of spiritual food that truly satisfies for way too long. And today, Jesus is telling us, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. And we read that in John 6.35. Humanity has resorted to addictions for fulfillment, seeking to fill the hole within the soul. And there is no amount of drugs, no amount of alcohol, no amount of pornography, no amount of sex, no amount of overeating, no amount of retail therapy, no amount of exercise or whatever it is that um, tempts us or addicts us sufficient enough for anyone's soul to be completely fulfilled. It is a truth that we need to receive and understand. These different exercises are and can truly become nasty habits when our eyes are not fixed on Jesus and when we become weary. Jesus said to us, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. And we read that in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28. He said that because only Jesus can fill the void in our souls. I will say it again. Only Jesus can fill the void in our souls. 
In today's lesson, we need to observe that Satan did not lead Jesus into the wilderness. It was not Satan. The Bible tells us in verse number one that the Holy Spirit was the one that led Jesus into the wilderness where he was going to be tempted by Satan. Jesus, the best role model of them all, not only shows us how to deal with temptation, but he also teaches us the power of scripture in battling with the evil one. During his temptation in the wilderness, Jesus, being God, could have dismissed Satan and said, hey, get out of here, get the stepping, goodbye. No, but instead of doing that, even though he was God and had the authority and the power to do it, he did not go that route. Instead, when the devil came to him questioning, if you are the son of God, bringing doubt into it, trying to bring doubt because Jesus know, knows who he is, if you are the son of God, the devil said, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. He had some nerve. Seriously, Satan, get a grip. Jesus quoted the scriptures and said, no. The scripture says people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And we read that in verse number four. Satan was telling Jesus indirectly to put his physical needs before his spiritual needs. But Jesus intersected with bringing God to the center of it all. And for me, that is a personal challenge. When I am tempted, do I consider what would Jesus do? When I am tempted, do I consider bringing God to the center of my situation as a sustaining rock of ages to hold me? In our daily walk, we face temptation after temptation all the time. The devil comes to us and whispers, hey, you need to have a little fun. It's all right. You know you can play around. It's all right. You can buy now and pay later. Don't worry about the consequences. Get okay with it. You're fine. You'll be okay. Trust me. He says all of this nonsense to us. Yet the Bible tells us in John 8:44 that the devil is a liar and the father of all lies. Sometimes people mess up. All of us mess up in our lives, putting physical needs before spiritual needs. This becomes later an obsession and we let things, people, and goals become more important than being in the presence of God. Again, being obsessed with things, considering other people, and achieving our goals, and putting this before God, it becomes a stumbling block. It is great to have relationships. It is great to have people in our lives. It is good to have closeness with others, but this cannot be put above our God. It is also fine to have a career and to have goals that we can achieve, but we cannot put our career above our God by saying people do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Jesus was pointing out that we should have our spiritual priorities in order. He was saying that we need to put God first. So the invitation is for all of us to put God first and to put him in his rightful place in our lives in our family setting, at work, in our everyday movement. When the devil comes to us with a temptation, we need to quote God's word and remind the devil that we shall not live by bread alone, but by every word and every direction that is given to us by God. And I'd like to close this sermon sharing a song with you. When I was a child, I think it was, I was 12 or 13, I believe, a group of singers came to our church um, called the Melodic Heralds, and they sang this beautiful song. 
I translated it for you in this paper inside of your bulletin. The title of it is Solo Cristo Puede Llenar Tu Ser. Only Christ Can Fill Your Soul. And obviously I'm going to sing it in Spanish, but I'd like you to please follow these lyrics with me and um, ask a closing prayer because the world may offer many things there might be many achievements that we may achieve, yet the focus is for us to be mindful that only Christ can fill our souls. There's a little space within our hearts that belongs to Christ. Nothing and no one else can fill it. So I'd like to close with this hymn for the glory of Jesus' name. And you can help me with keeping the beat. El mundo trata de llenar el vacío que hay en ti. Andas todo el universo. Thank you. Luego te sientes igual hasta que a Dios tú lo encuentres. Cuando la muerte te llame, nada te podrá ayudar. Pues ven a Cristo, que solo Él te llenará. Solo Cristo, no sabes que Cristo llenará. Él llenará, Él llenará. May the Lord bless you. We have now a moment to share our joys and our concerns. But before we do that, I'd like to extend the prayer. If you are in a, in a situation where you're struggling with your faith, with, or struggling with temptation, or struggling with life in general, I'd like to let you know that this altar is open. The presence of the Lord is with us. 
and the Holy Spirit desires to minister to you. It's not about me. It's not about nobody here today. It's about you and the Lord having that time. So I want to extend an invitation for you to come to the altar and say, God, I surrender. I cannot do this on my own. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your power. I need your word. Whatever it is that you may need, know that this altar is open and the Lord is here to minister to your life. So please, if you need to come forward, as I say this prayer, I invite you to do that. Come forth. The Lord wants to intervene in your situation, bless you and use you for the glory of his name. Holy God, once again, we are before you. Lord God, our lives are in your hands. Our joys are in your hands. The temptations that we are undergoing are before you, O Lord. It is real. The overeating sometimes is real. The stress sometimes is real. Whatever it may be, Lord, that we're tempted with, it's real. It's not something that we can overlook, God. It's something that we battle with day in and day out, Lord. We need your help and we need your strength to overcome these temptations in the name of Jesus, Lord. To say to the devil, get thee behind me in the name of Jesus, O Lord. Help us to overcome for the glory and honor of your name. Relieve us, we pray. And allow us to be bold to say before you, O oh Lord, within our hearts or in our corners or at home, wherever we are able to, to confront ourselves with the reality of what it is that we are dealing with, Lord God. That we may say like they do in the Alcoholics Anonymous setting, Lord, I am an alcoholic. I am an addict. I am a pornography addict. I am a sex addict. I am a, a shopping addict. Whatever the struggle that we have, Lord, give us the boldness to come before you with honesty. Because you have promised that when we confess our sins, you are faithful and true to break our bandages, to break every chain for the glory of your name. We lift our lives before you, O oh God. Help us to overcome temptation, we pray. Help us to trust you with that information. Because when we confess, we can find healing, Lord. Open our hearts and open our minds to confess to you what our needs are, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now we have a moment to say thank you, Lord, for our joys and also lift up our concerns. I know my sister wanted to share about our sister Barbara's husband trajectory, so I'd like to invite you forward to do that right now, please. Yep. Go ahead, he'll get you. My friend Barb Clanch normally sits over there. Her husband, Don, is very, very ill. He is in upstate medical intensive care unit where he'll be for some time just because he, Lyme, he has Lyme disease. Hmm. Very critical, the poor man can't walk. It's just very, very sad. So I, well, my thing to you is please, when you're working outside, if you see a tick, please be careful so you don't end up with Lyme disease because it is a very, very, very difficult situation. We don't know how he's been there a, month, a week now and we think maybe he's gonna be there for a month. So please be careful when you're working outside. Thank you. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. Uh -huh. So let us come to the Lord in prayer, please, once again, not only to lift up Barbara's, Barb's husband, but to pray for one another. Precious God, thank you so much that in our weakness you are strong. Thank you so much that you uh, never sleep, that you never slumber, because Lord, you watch us night and day. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that is around us, providing us to stand I'm speaking Spanish to you now, providing us, sustaining, and providing us hope, Lord God. Thank you for your word in which we can find hope and strength 
and direction for each day, God. We pray that you give us the wisdom that we need to resort to your word, to resort to worship, to resort to prayer as a priority in our time of need, Lord, in our, our time of trouble, that we may come to you, our fortress, not just reach out to the phone and call a friend, but reach out to you, Lord God, as our best friend, so that we may find your hope and your strength to move forward each day, Lord God. We are before you praying for Sandy. We lift up Sandy Fultz, praying for your will to be done in her life, Lord God. You know her struggles, you know her needs, and you know her health situation, Lord God. As a church, we lift her up before you, praying for you to be glorified, Lord, and to have your way in her life from the inside out, Lord God. There is nothing, absolutely nothing impossible for you. So we pray for Sandy. We pray for Dan Clunch. We pray for Noreen Butterfield and her um, family member, Joyce Bissau. We pray for Jasmine and her family, Lord. We pray for Michelle Deline in her body, Lord God. We present Baylor, Emerson Tanner, Phyllis Nelson, Rosemary Scott, Barbara Potter, Amanda Lewis, the Diaz family, the Wiseman family, Dylan Casa, Dylan and Wesley Elsner, Sandy Palmer, Leslie, David Cohen, Nathaniel Green, Mike Dempsey, Jeff Bateman, Mike Smith, Bill Wahlberg, the Cohen family, Vanessa Haidt, Renee Fensky and her children, Roxanne and her parents, Bill Rasbeck, the Brown family. Lord, all of us need you, God. Louise Hyde, Eleanor Huffman, and Don Goodness, and all of the people in this um, rehab assisted living places, they need you, Lord. And you have promised us that if we bring to you our cares, you care enough to listen and to respond to our needs, Lord God. Each of these people we have named before you, Lord, with the intention for you to be magnified, for your power to intervene on their behalf, and for your blessings to be upon them and their family members, Lord. You know, some of our friends are seeking job situations to change. Some of our friends are seeking home situations to change. Some of our friends are seeking health situations to change, Lord God. You know every detail of every person's life. You know every hair that is in each and every one of our heads, Lord God. And those of us that don't have any hair, Lord, you know the thoughts in their heads. <laughs> we pray for your glory to continue to be magnified in each of our lives, in each of our homes, in each of our families, in our communities, in this nation and all around the world, Lord God. Be glorified, O oh Lord. Have your way and help us to trust you every step of the way as we wait, Lord. Give us a song of praise as we wait on you, Lord. Give us a hopeful heart as we wait on you, Lord. Give us a trusting mind as we wait on you, Lord. Be glorified, O oh Father. Exalt your name for the glory and honor of your Son, Jesus Christ by whose blood we are here standing and rejoicing and celebrating, Lord. Have your way in our lives and in our nation, Lord. As, as uh, election days are approaching, Lord, we continue to pray for each of our lives and each of the people in this nation, Lord. You know the struggles and you know the fears, God. We pray that your will be done in this, your nation, for the glory and honor of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the power and the kingdom and the glory forever. Amen. Can you please stand with me as we sing our closing hymn, Soldiers of Christ Arise? Thank you. If able.
Pray without ceasing, pray. What a powerful reminder. Hallelujah. I hope we do, do, do that this week. Continue to pray for one another and sustain each other in the Lord. Stay well nourished with, by God's grace and share the bread of life with others. May the grace of Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen and amen. We have cards in the entryway. If you want to send a card to Barb Clunch and her family, that would be nice. Feel free to use them. That's what they're there for, my friends. My sister, will you be seeing Barb? Will you be seeing them this week? Can you give this to her, please? I was going to mail it, but since you're going, can you please give that to her for me? I'm so sorry. Just from a little tip. I'm so sorry. You never know. This is a good idea.